Hey guys, my name is Jared Schoomaker. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. I have an odd question for you. When you were born, was one of the things you wanted to do to live an okay life? To live a life where the script was already written for you. A life where you're pre-programmed through society, your parents, teachers, your friends, more recently social media, the news, government. Was that your hope when you were born? Was that your hope when you were growing up? To pretty much already be in aligned with what society wanted you to be. Now I want you to sit with that for a minute because sadly, most of us live a scripted life. Most of us live a life of what's called the model citizen. Now the acronym for model is mediocre, obedient, dependent, entertained, lifeless. So this idea of this model citizen was created for the betterment of society, in my opinion. Now let's flip back and see somebody who is not your typical model, somebody who lives an extraordinary life, somebody who does things by their own rules. They don't fall into society's rules. Somebody who is not dependent on anyone else or anything else. Somebody who creates their own entertainment and somebody who's full of life, somebody who's always traveling, somebody who's always living that lifestyle that you want to live. This is what's called an unscripted life. And very few people get to this level. Very few people. And the ones who get to this level are generally people that are self-employed, that are entrepreneurs, that are what we call producers. And we're going to get back to that in a minute of what the idea of a producer is, somebody who does not live an unscripted life, somebody who lives by their own rules. But let's stick first with really what most of us are. We're cogs in the wheel. We're carbon copies of each other. We think more often than not alike. We act alike. We dress alike. And this is what society wants you to do. They want you to create that cog in the wheel so that that machine can keep moving forward and can keep going forward and that any thoughts or any dreams that you have quickly get fucking pushed down because the herd, the weight of the herd is on you. It was like, oh, don't do that. You, you can't do that. You'll get in trouble. You, no, you, you can't do this. It's the whole idea is to keep you that model citizen, that mediocre person, that the obedient person, the person who's dependent upon others, that person who is dependent on the external validation of others. That person who doesn't typically move the needle through his or her own internal validation. That person who is easily entertained, whether it be Monday night football, Sunday football, sporting events, gaming, porn, surfing the internet, constant watching movies. All of this stuff is designed to keep you entertained. And if you can stay entertained, you can stay numb to what's really going on around you. This person becomes lifeless. Yes, they're alive, but they're going through the motions. They're just existing, they're not living. I help a lot of men in this, this particular area, not, not specifically in this area, but in this idea of, listen, Jared, they come to me and they're going through a divorce, they're going through a bad breakup, or they're just going through something in their life and they said, man, I've done everything right. I went to school, I went to college, I got a job, I got married, I had kids, I bought a house, I got the dog, I got two cars. There's gotta be more than this. This, this, is, this is what society told me to do. Now what? And that's the whole point. Now what? There is no now what. 
this is it. This is what society wants you to do, is to just pay your taxes, just work. Yes, raise your kids, but not really live, not really enjoy them because you know you only got a couple hours before up. Oh, I got to go to bed because I got to get up in the morning and I got to go to work and give eight to 10 to 12 hours of my time to somebody else. This is that model citizen. And there's two pathways that society pushes you in to this type of thinking, this type of model. And sadly, there's two doorways they both lead to the same slaughterhouse. And the first pathway to making you that perfect model citizen for society is to keep you in that consumer mindset. Whether you're consuming social media, whether you're consuming basketball games or sporting events, whether you're consuming going to watch artists, going to watch musical music festivals, whether you're consuming buying clothes to look a certain way, consuming an automobile. All of these things are designed to keep you dependent upon a job so that you can afford a lifestyle that you think you want, but it's really what society wants you to believe that you want. Have you ever asked yourself, why am I why do I drive this car? Why do I wear these clothes? Why do I act the way I do? Why am I, I not happy in my life? Because you're living externally. <clears throat> Everything you're doing involves around others and what they think of you. This is that consumer mindset. You end up prostituting yourself for a job that you hate, that a job that will replace you inside two weeks when you die or when you get fired. And you're taking that money and you're pushing it out there through credit cards, through loans. You're pushing that out there so that you can live a lifestyle that you really can't afford and you really can't enjoy. Because in order to have those things, you've got to go back to work to pay for those things. This is the consumer mindset. And society, social media, marketing companies, they're all really good. Influencers are all really good at pushing this narrative to you. Like, hey, you'll be, you're nothing if you don't have this. When you're a consumer... You don't really play the game of life. You play the game of consumption and you're really a spectator in your own life because you can't really enjoy it. You live through other people and then you just become that carbon copy of that person. It could be an entertainer that you follow. It could be a fictitious movie star that you idolize. It could be influencers on TikTok or social media. When you consume other people's content, when you consume other people's ideas, when you buy in to a lifestyle that you can't afford, yet you go into debt to try to look like you can afford that lifestyle, you're actually, you become a carbon copy of that thing or that idea or that person that you're consuming. You're not your own individual. And this is what society has basically made, I'm going to say 80% of society is like this. They're in that consumption lifestyle. Look at TikTok. Look at all these influencers who's, who are, are these fake people on TikTok who are just surfing two seconds, five seconds at a time. They keep flipping and watching the next stupid video, the next stupid video, the next piece of content. They're just consuming. And every single time they're just consuming this, their mind is getting completely numb with bullshit information, with fake information, with needless information, needless entertainment. You become more desensitized to your own life. You become more desensitized to what your body's already bringing up until one day you could be 35, 45, 55 and you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, is this it? Like this, this is life? I've done everything I was supposed to and, and I just feel like I should be further along by now. I feel like I should be more fulfilled. This is the model citizen. This is what society has programmed most of us 
to subscribe to. Now, the second part of this model citizen is if you're not a consumer, you can subscribe to the idea of being a saver and you're serving really the same master. Now, the saver, these people live completely opposite. Instead of overspending and overconsuming, they oversave. They basically consume very little and they save and they invest in the hope of future freedom. This is the idea people said, save your money, put it into a 401k, put it into a savings account, invest it wisely so that one day you get to retire at 65. And what, maybe you have 10 good years before you die? Put all your money in that hope that you'll have freedom down the road. Meanwhile, you gave all your good fucking years to some boss who doesn't give a shit about you to pay taxes to a government who doesn't give a shit about you. And you've given all of your time, all of your attention, all of your focus to the wrong things. Now, the saver may sound responsible because a lot of you guys watching this are a little bit older. I'm 48. You've heard this before. You've probably said this before is, yeah, no, don't, don't live vicariously through others. You got to save. Yes. But you can't take it to the extreme because what happens is you postpone life. Savers den tend to save so much that they're postponing their own life in the hopes that they live it down the road. But here's the problem. Most of us don't live to be retirement age and the ones that do often have massive health problems that they can't really enjoy what they've saved. They can't really enjoy what they've, that little bit that they've saved, that little bit of what they've created for themselves. They don't really get to enjoy it. And God forbid, one correction in the market, one downturn in the market, your savings is completely wiped out. So you have this consumer's mindset, which is always about consumption and debt. And then you have the saver's mindset, which is all about depriving yourself and hoping. Two doors, same slaughterhouse. The consumer's masters are banks, social media, products and services, influencers telling them what to do. That's who they serve. That's their master. Savers masters usually all fall to one, one organization, Wall Street. That's who their master is. And they kept all their money into a 401k or into some type of annuity plan. And they hope the people who are managing this plan, they hope that these people will do right by them and produce enough income for them so that they can live maybe 10 or 15 years of their life. Eh, okay. They can do the things that they hope they can do down the road. But again, we know we've seen time and time again that these fiduciaries don't do what they're supposed to do. And they certainly don't give a shit about you as the individual. They care about the fund. So when there is a correction, you get screwed. They don't. When there's a downturn in the market, you get screwed. They don't. Yet for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you've given them all your money. You've put all your money into these accounts only for them to get rich, only for them to live off management fees and commissions and all this crap and you to get those pittance after the government's done fucking you too. Again, the, the doors open. You either have a consumption mindset or a savers. The end result is you go into the same slaughterhouse, guys. You're not going to get away with this. You're just not. You can't rely on hope and you certainly can't rely on somebody else to do right by you, especially with your money. You have to do it yourself. Yes, saving and putting your money into these accounts is a good idea, but only a part of that should be part of the overall structure that you create, buying real estate, getting into some businesses. And we're going to talk about that in one second. Stay with me. If this is resonating with you guys, if you guys really think about this and say, fuck, man, 
I have fallen into these, this trap. I have been saving everything I can. Don't just dump your money right now. Just, just stay with me. If you fall into the other ones, like, yeah, man, I just bought this brand new car. I don't know why the fuck I bought it. I, I really don't want to make these payments yet. Now I'm stuck with this car. I thought maybe this car would make me feel better and make other people look at me, but nobody gives a shit. That's the whole point. Nobody gives a shit. Marketing is really good at fucking with you to think just for that second that you have this need, that you need to have something. When all inside, you just need to have you. You need to have your own mental fortitude. You need to have your own inner dialogue to realize, I don't need this shit. I'm falling into this trap. In the last three years of my journey, I have completely gotten out of some businesses, completely gotten out of certain lifestyles that really wasn't serving me because I was tiptoeing into both of these models. We're all consumers, guys. I'm not knocking you if, if you say you're a consumer. We all consume things. But the one thing I found to get out of both of these ideas, to move out of this model, is you need to become a producer. And the only way you can really become a producer is become self-employed, to become an entrepreneur, to create something of value that other people then will consume from you. It could be content on social media. It could be a YouTube page. <clears throat> you might be really good at fixing cars. You might be really good at something that you can provide value for other people that you can monetize. Now you become a producer. Now you're not just taking your time and trading your hard-earned time for money from somebody else where you can then become your and start your own company. And yes, you're going to have to invest way more time than a nine to five. You're going to initially put in way more hours, way more sacrifice, and yes, you could lose it all, but you're now, you're losing it all potentially on your terms. Both of these other models, guys, I just talked to you about, you're still gonna lose it all on somebody else's terms. Why not do it on your own? This is why I talk to about guys who become self-employed or who have a really good idea and Months go by and they haven't executed. And then a year goes by and they haven't executed. And they come back to me and they're like, I'm so close. I've been analyzing this. I've been analyzing that. And I'm like, dude, stop for a minute. I understand that you're scared. I understand that this is going to be really hard for you to make this switch. But what's your alternative? You can stay in that model mindset and go down either path you want. The end result is you're still not going to live the life that you potentially could live by exiting this model and starting something for yourself. Now, you might have to work a hell of a lot more and a hell of a lot harder for three or four or five years, but then what if you are truly free after that? What if you've created a business or an idea or something that's paying you over and over and over again where you're not dependent on some fucking job. You're not dependent on other people to do what's right for you for your money. You've invested all of that yourself. The model citizen, that model that society has created for you, I don't want you to be mediocre. I don't want you to just be obedient and blindly go with the herd mentality. You've seen what happens. I don't want you to be dependent upon other people, certainly a boss. One day they can fire you. One day that job just up and moves to Mexico. Now you're fucked. You're like, dude, I have all of this consumption. I've done all of these things. Now I'm gonna have to take a pay cut and drop my lifestyle. Why don't you drop your lifestyle right now and get into something of your own, create a business, drop that lifestyle now. You voluntarily start shedding shit off. This is what I did. Stop looking for entertainment externally on everything. Stop following these athletes that don't give a shit about you. Stop going to these concerts and giving your money to these entertainers that don't give a shit about you. Stop focusing on other people and wondering what they're going to think about me if I buy this. They're gonna think I'm cool. No, they're not. They're not even thinking about you. Stop
Stop putting your attention out externally. Look in, internally and ask that question. What am I doing with my life? Why am I really here? Am I doing everything I can for myself? And do I have something I can offer society that I've been keeping it to myself? I've been playing it small. Do I have something of value that I can offer my community? Do I want to be lifeless? Do I want to work 30, 40, 50 fucking years to get 10 years good maybe to go on a golf course and drink, maybe get a cool sports car when I'm 60 years old that I can't even get the fuck out of? You see it every time, guys. You see these old guys, and I love them all. They work their balls off, and they get a Corvette. This is why I won't buy a Corvette, because I think it's an old man's car. And they drive it for a couple years, and then they can't get out of it anymore, or it hurts. They just wanted that thing, but why didn't they get it when they were younger? Because they lived this model lifestyle. They were either consuming or more than likely they were saving. The choice is yours. If you have any questions about this or you need a, a, a game plan to help move you out of this model mindset and into becoming an entrepreneur, go to our website. The link is down below. You can click on the chat widget, book a call with us. You can also join our communities. It's linked down below. I have videos in there. We have affiliate links that you can join. It doesn't cost you anything, yet you can still produce extra money for yourself and for your family to start moving out of this model mindset. And certainly I have the link down below if you just want to keep following us on our journey. You can join our free Facebook group. And there I do put content out there to help you guys with this understanding that at some point you are going to die. Why not die in your own terms? Why not die broke, but with everything you want to do, you left it on the fucking field. My name is Jared Schoonmaker. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. If you found this video helpful, please hit like, hit comment, hit subscribe and that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. With that, we'll talk soon.